Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. My name is Sarah, also known as Laugh Love Langella. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some simple front porch styling for the spring season. We are going to be doing another McGee & Co wreath dupe this year. I did do a different one than last year, so you guys can have choice between last year's version and the one as you can get a peek behind me here. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's get right into it. Starting off today, I'm just going to quickly sweep everything off so that we have a nice fresh slate to work off of. We have been working a lot on our front garden bed and adding in some stepping pavers and everything. If you guys missed my last video, it was a mini day in the life and it gave you just a little glimpse of what it is we've been working on and I will be sure to share more of that as it comes up on my channel. This green and white outdoor rug is older from Target. They always have different variations out each year. And the braided jute doormat is from Kirkland's. Sun is finally peeking out a little bit. It was supposed to be a really cloudy day today. Of course, naturally, it's been in like the 70s and the week i'm filming this it's dropping down into the 50s so of course that's how it happens but for our front porch i have been absolutely obsessed with lenten roses i think that they are just so so pretty and like don't have thorns like regular roses do so if you guys missed my last video i did a very mini day in the life kind of thing brought you guys to a couple of home decor stores I picked up the wreath supplies that I'll be sharing for the wreath DIY later in the video. And I also stopped at Lowe's to just do some yard work and I grabbed these while I was there. I thought they were so pretty. And these were a very well established plant. So it's still going to look a little bit small in the pot, but I wanted to make sure because I made the mistake last year in my decorating video of overcrowding my planter. So I wanna make sure this has plenty of room to kind of bush out as it pleases. So I grabbed a Lenten rose and then I also grabbed this one. It is an Alpino, Alpino red. Wow, I'm not even gonna try that. Put the name on the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna mispronounce that. But I thought that this was such a beautiful color to bounce off of the subtleness of the lentins and again this one is already well established and i love picking perennials because even if they tend to be struggling in my planters i can very quickly transplant them somewhere in our yard i did that last year and everything's coming right back up so we're gonna get to planting these now so I'm going to be using the same planters that I did last year. I am a sucker for baskets, but I'm also a sucker for planters. And I always am able to find something else that I like and I don't need it. So this larger one that I'm putting the Lenten Rose in is actually from Walmart. It is super budget friendly and is a great dupe for one from Pottery Barn. If you wanted to give it more of that concrete look that the Pottery Barn one has, you could easily grab some of the stone spray paint and spray paint it to give it some more texture. But I like to just leave this one as is. It's super easy to wipe down to. I left this outside all winter long and it still looks great. And the smaller one is also a dupe for the one from Pottery Barn, but this one is actually concrete. I had picked it up from Home Goods last year. Haven't seen it this year, but who knows, maybe they just haven't come out just yet. I would still recommend checking out Home Goods. They have a really great planter selection.
So now I'm going to add this bunny I had gotten from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. And on the other side, this black lantern is much older from Hearth and Hand at Target. And on the rocking chairs, I'm just going to use some throw pillows and a blanket that I already have on hand. I haven't come across any outdoor pillows that I really like. I need some that have some sort of strap to them because it can get quite windy here and I don't want this ending up in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> So moving on to the DIY portion for the wreath today, I actually DIY'd a McGee Co. wreath last year. It was so beautiful. It has lots of greenery and a couple pops of some florals and a pink color. It was super, super pretty. I love it so much that I actually left it together and I use it inside of our home. I don't like to leave it outside because I just like it that much but I will have that video linked from last year down below. So that way, if you guys would prefer to do that wreath, you absolutely can. The wreath that we are going to be DIYing this year is another one from McGee & Co. It is their wild grass and eucalyptus wreath. It's a little bit more neutral based. It's perfect for early spring decorating, but it can easily transition to spring and summer months and you can just add in a couple more pops of color with some floral stems as we get closer to summer to just give it a little bit more life if you would prefer. So we are starting off with just the basic grapevine wreath. I got this one from Hobby Lobby a few years ago and this is one of the larger ones. I want to say it's a 22 or a 24 inch. I can't exactly remember. Our front door is eight feet tall so the smaller wreaths just don't proportionally look right. So I like to get one that's larger. And funny enough, I actually purposely try to grab ones that are actually an oval shape rather than fully round. So that way they're larger up and down than side to side. I think it just gives more balance to the space, but we're gonna start off with our base and get into DIYing this wreath. So the first stem we're starting off today with is this seeded eucalyptus. This is from Michaels, as is all the stems I'm actually gonna be using today. And when it comes to actually putting your wreath together, the best form of action is to follow it in one direction. You can go clockwise, you can go counterclockwise, it doesn't matter, but put them all in the same direction. So I'm gonna have these all kind of going this way and that way you'll get a good overlap happening as well. You'll notice when you put them on the side they start to fall forward. We will easily fix that with some floral wire. We just got to get our base going and then take it from there. Now, when it comes to how I lay them, obviously they're very straight when you first get them. I just lean them in the direction they're going in. So that way they just follow that line that much more. So now I finished putting all of these seeded eucalyptus leaves on and you can see how these ones are just sticking out so far from the actual wreath. So I like to take some floral wire and take these stems and just get them a little bit closer. Don't make them like super, super tight, but just enough to pull it back to being over to the wreath so they're not sagging nearly as much and it helps give a better look. I'd like to keep it loose though. I want it to look organic. I don't want it to look super, super structured, but this definitely helps it look like a more complete wreath. Mm -hmm. 
the next stem we're adding is this round eucalyptus one. This one has a slightly different color tone, but it will help give some more dimension, having the different color tone and different shape in TD mix. For placing the round eucalyptus stems, I'm just making note of where the other ones are placed and I'm trying to put them in between the other ones to make sure that we have nice balance going all throughout the wreath. Next, we're going to be adding in these white picks. I am actually going to cut them up. You can see there's literally three separate parts here, so that way I can better spread them around the whole wreath. So here is where we are currently at with this. The last step is going to be adding in a couple of these twigs, but as you can see, these are the ones I use for fall and winter decorating. They're very gray. So I'm gonna quickly throw some brown paint on it so it just looks a little bit more like the McGee & Co one. So I have the twig stem cut up into smaller segments. And I'm literally just taking some brown paint that I already have on hand. And as you can see, it already looks so much better. This is the part I painted and this is the part I didn't. So it's just gonna give it more of the color tone that the Mickey & Co one has. And the finishing touch is adding in these little twig branches that we painted. I know it seems like such a minor detail to paint a faux stem, but I have to tell you that it made all the difference in giving a more realistic look and also giving more vibrancy and life to it, especially since this is a spring wreath. Here is a finished look at how it all came together. I was able to DIY this for only $26, not including the grapevine wreath because I already had that on hand, but I think it is such a great transition one. And again, for the summer season, you can just add in more pops of color. This is a great base to start off with, or if you are looking for something more simplistic and neutral like myself right now, it looks so, so good, but I will have all the stems that I used in the video description as well as the quantity of them. Now our finishing touch is just adding this DIY look for less wreath. Again, I will have all of the stem quantities and links in the video description if you guys are looking to make this yourselves. But here is a finished look at how our spring front porch styling all came together.
so that is going to wrap up today's video friends i sure hope you enjoyed seeing how i put together our front porch it doesn't need to be overdone you can just focus on some small simple details to decorate it for the season Again, if you want to do last year's version of the Miggy & Co wreath dupe, I will have that video linked down below so you guys can check it out. Or you can always do this one as well, add in some more pops of color with some florals, make it your own style. But I hope you guys got some good decorating ideas and inspiration. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me here today and I'll see you in my next video, friends. Bye.